Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about science breakthroughs of 2022. I recently did a podcast on the medical breakthroughs of 2022. That'll be my playlist, uh, the sciences, I believe. And as normal, as always, I'll put the link to the description in the description of the site that I'm going to read an article from. I try to give credit to the person. And I go through it, usually word for word, and I'll interject my own two cents. So, a lot of these articles have highlighted or underlined words and sentences, and those link to other articles, and some even link to abstracts and, you know, what the science was behind it. In any case, this should be fun for me, as I said on the other one, most of the time I do this on my own. Even if I wasn't doing a podcast, I've always had this, you know, geek and mean science nerd that I would go look, I will go look and check for the scientific breakthroughs every year, medical breakthroughs. And as I discussed on the medical breakthroughs, there is this sense of clickbait, because that's the game, you know, you have to do that. So in reference, there would be a, science, a medical breakthrough about um, transplants. And even though... It might say something like, oh, in human trials, you know, two to three years, you might really be looking at a 15-year, seven to 15-year window of when it might be practical for us. Now, the scientific breakthroughs are a little different here and there, but it could lead to other things. But still, you know, we try to ground ourselves in reality of the Internet and what it is and what it does. So anyway, I'll start with... uh, Scientific breakthrough. This is from theweek.com by Harold Mass uh, and Devika Ryo. All right. We'll go through. Like I said, I'll read it and then I'll maybe interject things here and there. So we'll start with scientists in many fields have been getting little attention over the last two years or so as the world focused on the emergency push to develop vaccines and treatments for COVID-19. But labs and researchers have remained busy, recently reporting a dizzying series of major discoveries and achievements. So let's start with nuclear fusion. I did a podcast on this too. Scientists at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in California announced in December that they had produced the first fusion reaction that created more energy than was used to start it. And by the way, that's highlighted and underlined. It'll lead you to that. The long elusive achievement marked a major breakthrough in harnessing the process that fuels the sun. This milestone moves us one significant step closer to powering our society with zero carbon fusion energy. Energy Secretary Jennifer Graham said, Fusion involves push, pushing together two nuclei of a lightweight element, such as hydrogen, at a colossal speed, forcing them to fuse. The leftover mass is converted into an enormous amount of energy, according to Einstein's formula, E equals MC2. <laughs> unlike fusion, in which atoms are split, unlike, unlike fission, in which atoms are split, <laughs> Fusion requires small amounts of ordinary fuel. The amount of hydrogen in a glass of water could provide enough energy for one person's lifetime and does not create much radioactive waste, which is why it's been called the Holy Grail for the future of nuclear power. Now, that's interesting. I want to read that again. Uh, The amount of hydrogen in a glass of water could provide enough energy for one person's lifetime. That's insane. And it's really cool. But they could even figure these things out. Because I'm sitting here, you know, Brooklyn, New York, and smoking my weed and fucking up the English language and people's names and scientific terms. And, you know, there are people who spend years getting degrees. And, all right, I'm going to go with it, though. The amount of hydrogen in a glass of water can provide enough energy for one person's lifetime. Well, oof. Next up, we got the James Webb Telescope. Uh, I'm in love with this thing. There is so much love for this. 
all the pictures, the clarity, the stunning, um, you know, awe-inspiring nature of the universe is being brought to us in even more vivid detail. Um, Popular Science Magazine this year named NASA's James Webb Telescope the Innovation of the Year in Aerospace Technology. Unlike the Hubble Space Telescope, which scanned the heavens from low Earth orbit, the Webb Telescope is camped hundreds of thousands of miles farther out, sitting in Earth's shadow, where it is permanently blocked from sunlight. Its view further protected by a multi-layer sun shield. It sits at the temperature minus 370 degrees Fahrenheit, best suited for its infrared sight. As a result, popular science says the 10 billion JWST, Jane Webb Space Telescope, can see deep into the fields of forming stars. It can appear 13 billion years back in time at ancient galaxies, still in their nursery. I mean, get, I get goosebumps. Do you fucking understand what that really means? They can appear 13 billion years back in time. That's insane. Some of these pictures are fucking amazing. Yes, light. It takes time to get to us. Blah, blah, blah. Wow. It can peek at exoplanets, seeing them directly where astronomers would have once had to reconstruct meager traces of their existence. It can teach us how those stars and galaxies came together from primordial matter, something Hubble could only glimpse. And it's rightfully so that this gets so much praise. The president, his asshole face or whatever the fuck, who cares? He actually came out and, like, did a fucking, showed a picture. It was groundbreaking in that sense. I always go to Twitter or I look around and I am in awe whenever I see these pictures produced, these images by the James Webb Telescope. This is fascinating, awe-inspiring, just beautiful stuff. And it is a realization of what's out there in the universe. This is, I don't care if these fucking meat things we're in, whatever you want to call them, are uh, interpreting data in a certain way. Uh, well, guess what? It's fucking beautiful. Or inspiring stuff out there. Next, we'll go to Transplant Promise. A group of Yale scientists reported in the journal Nature this summer that they succeeded in reviving cells in their hearts, liver, kidneys, and brains of pigs that have been lying dead in the lab for an hour. The research has accomplished the feat by using a device, much like a heart lung machine, to pump a custom-made solution, dubbed Organ X, (laughs) into the pig's bodies. The pig's heart started beating and sent the solution through their veins. The pigs weren't revived, but the organs started functioning again, and they never got stiff like a typical dead pig, the New York Times reported. The researchers, according to the Times, Hope their breakthrough eventually will help increase the supply of human organs available for transplant by letting doctors get viable organs from bodies long after death. The technology also might be useful in limiting damage to hearts from heart attacks and to brains from strokes. So, one thing leads to another. This is amazing for people. I think I talked about this on my medical breakthrough because it fits into both. Some might overlap. That, um... Some of the most awesome people are the people who check off that box and say, you know, the organ donor. And I think I told the story of one of the donors on there, because I think you could send in a card or you whatever said, take everything, save as many people as you can. And that's just fucking awesome. But transplant promise. And again, there's blue highlighted words underlined. That leads you to the report in Journal of Nature and the New York Times. You know, how they reported it. Uh, a universal flu vaccine. U.S. public health officials have long warned Americans to brace for another possible COVID-19 surge as winter hits and families gather for the holidays. Indeed, the nation is facing a triple mem- triple-demic Triple-demic, with the COVID-19 cases rising. Respiratory 
Syncteo virus RSV overloading many hospitals. In the 2022 to 2023 flu season, building on what could be the worst in a decade. As of early December, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention have already recorded 4,050 or 4,500 flu deaths. Fighting the flu represents a new challenge every year because influenza viruses are constantly evolving. Some years, the vaccines are effective. Sometimes they miss the mark. But now Scott Hensley at the University of Pennsylvania and his colleagues have created a flu vaccine based on mRNA molecules. The same technique Moderna and Pfizer, along with its partner BioNTech, used to make their widely used COVID-19 vaccines. The vaccine has produced antibody responses against all 20 known strains of influenza A and B in tests on mice with the effectiveness lasting for months. The results were similar in tests on ferrets, fueling hopes the universal vaccine could work in humans too. Now again, a little insight and a little reality. Yes, I know people scam people. I know there are fucking doctors in places getting, you know, doing the scam, but it doesn't ruin the reality of COVID was real, it is real, like flus are real. Um... We have a, you know, process in human nature. We have to go through these things. And by the way, I saw a thing about people tying together conspiracies about uh, people saying that this would happen years ago and it was planned. Well, you know what? You know why people said it was going to happen years ago? Because they're scientists and doctors and you know what the fuck is going on. I, sometimes people get me fucking nuts. Anyway, a universal flu vaccine, that could be groundbreaking again. Let's keep our fingers crossed. What do we look at here? Is it two years? Is it a year? I don't know. Because you got to, again, just understand what the internet is these days. Next is changing an asteroid's trajectory. If you've watched Armageddon or Deep Impact or some other movie about an asteroid threatening to wipe out life on Earth, relax. NASA this year proved with its double asteroid redirection test, DART, mission that it has the ability to deflect a giant space rock off a collision course with our planet. NASA sent the 1,100-pound DART spacecraft slamming into a 525-foot diameter asteroid, Dimorphos. <laughs> At 14,000 miles an hour to see whether the impact force would be enough to change directory. That's insane. It sent a 1,100-pound a spacecraft slamming into a 520-foot diameter asteroid at 14,000 miles per hour. Dimorphos, which didn't actually threaten Earth, was orbiting around a large parent asteroid, Didymos, <laughs> every 11 hours and 55 minutes before the crash. After DART slammed into the Dimorphos on September 26, ast astronomers clocked its orbit Time at 11 hours and 23 minutes, 32 minutes shorter than before, signaling a significant change in its path. Quote, all of us have a responsibility to protect our planet. After all, it's the only one we have. End quote, said NASA Administrator Bill Nelson. This mission shows that NASA is trying to be ready for whatever the universe throws at us. Again, this is incredible. Think about it. I don't care what religion you believe in or whatever. Deep down you know. No fucking guy in a throne above the whatever universal fucking place you believe they're watching is going to stop an asteroid from slamming into the fucking earth. Okay? You'll blame it and say, oh, it was God's plan, whatever the fuck it is. You know what? I'd rather have a guy in a fucking lab years working at this send a 1100 pound fucking spacecraft and slam it into an asteroid to see if they could fucking change its directory uh, trajectory and they did it which means we have plans for other things and by the way as many cameras we have and all we detect there are still surprise small asteroids and stuff that get through there are many people imagine how big the universe is and they don't give a fuck Okay, there's no huge asteroid coming towards Earth that'll hit us in 11 years, and there's go guy in a toga outfit 
with a long beard, you know, gonna point at the fucking thing and hold it in a fucking tractor beam. Like, it's not gonna fucking happen. What can happen and will happen maybe eventually is we'll be ready with certain satellites positioned around orbit of Earth or in space, whatever the fuck, the Lagrange point or whatever the fuck I learned, some stupid fucking thing. And they'll just shoot these fucking things at 14,000 miles an hour and hit them at the right angle and whatever. And because the space is so big and the way things work, you don't need a big impact type thing to change directory on these things. Just a tiny bit could be enough that by the time it does reach Earth, it's now got a different path. So this is amazing. I just love it. This is crazy. Next is AI for artists. Artificial intelligence is opening up new possibilities for businesses and households. And now, new text-to-image generators are giving everyone from artists to urban planners to reconstructive surgeons a new tool to help them visualize ideas. DAL, D-A-L-L-E-2, which OpenAI released in July, looks at hundreds of millions of captioned images to turn text prompts written by users into images. Mark Chen, the lead researcher on Dale E2, told the Atlantic that image generators like Dale E2 aim to democratize art. Is that right? Democratize, yeah, democratize art. This is the most exciting new technology in the AI space since natural language translation, Atlantic Deputy Editor Ross Anderson said. Now, this was um, something that kind of was like in the periphery of like things you kind of you know hear about but i even opened up the links for this because i was a little surprised i was a little confused by it so even on my own as someone who does this podcast i have a little deep dive to do but ai for artists uh taking uh text i mean it just sounds fascinating to me and because sometimes i do make thumbnails for people you know I'm not an artist. I can't draw or anything. I just um, like, and I, I, I could, I got pretty good at knowing where to place things. So, taking the images, isolating them, constructing a thumbnail for like a video, just seems to be something I'm, I could do. Not like I can draw the fucking people. And any, anyway, AI for artists. It seems, in, 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 you know, interesting to me. So, like I said, I even hit and I bookmarked. Um. You know what this isn't even about so you know if i did long podcast i maybe double back to it but i'll continue new vaccines to fight malaria malaria found in more than 90 countries kills an estimated 627,000 people every year vaccines could help reduce or eliminate the toll but scientists have struggled to develop a highly effective one this year though the technology used to create m RNA vaccines against COVID-19 has helped a research team led by George Washington University develop two experimental mRNA vaccine candidates that are highly effective in producing and reducing malaria infection and transmission. According to a study published in December in MPJ Vaccines, an open access scientific journal in the Nature Portfolio. Malaria elimination will not happen overnight, but such vaccines could potentially banish malaria from many parts of the world, says Nimbe Kumar, professor of global health at the George Washington University Milken Institute School of Public Health. Now, you've heard about this from such a long time, and even back in like the 70s, 80s, or you know, I was born in 71, but when you watch these movies, old older movies from those ages, you know, malaria is that thing is it was out there all the time it was used in movies in a sense and even if it wasn't a major plot thing it was it's the thing you know you heard about in the movies at the time where maybe now you might have movies you know just going off of uh covid or something in any case health for people science and the medical breakthroughs they kind of go together and it's for a reason and it works we know science is one of the best ways of the best way we have to get through this. So, you know, we're not going to open a Bible and pray to get the answers to fucking malaria and stuff. But again, highlighted 
sentences and areas we can hit. You can get you can look into the development of the mRNA vaccine. Uh, okay, so I'll continue. Cancer treatments advance. Scientists reported progress on several fronts in the battle against cancer. A team led by Chris Jones, a professor of pediatric brain tumor biology at the Institute of Cancer Research, worked with the company Benevolent AI to use artificial intelligence tools to come up with a new drug combination to fight diffuse intrinsic pontine glioma. Okay, to fight diffuse intrinsic pontine glioma, glioma, an incurable childhood brain cancer. The proposed combination extended survival in mice by as much as 14% and has been tested in a small group of children. In another potential breakthrough, Dr. Louis A. Diaz Jr. of Memorial Sloan Kettering's Cancer Center wrote, a paper published in June in the New England Journal of Medicine describing a treatment that resulted in Complete remission in all 18 rectal cancer patients who took the drug. Quote, I believe this is the first time this has happened in the history of cancer, Dr. Diaz said. Again, what is clickbait, what is not? I assume everything is to a certain extent. But when you dig down deep, other than conspiracy fucking nutballs, I got to believe that, you know, this might not be a two-year thing. It might be one of those 10-year things. But... Holy shit, you know, I have my own personal things going through the last 20 years. This is really important work. What are we going to do eventually to beat cancer treatments? Is it, you know, doing the CRISPR thing for the next generation of kids? Whatever it is. Uh, Just make the human body able to live for 200 years, whatever. Or have a button, like, you know, I'm I'm saying, I want to do it. Anyway, got to beat cancer eventually. Let's find new ways, and if it is artificial intelligence coming up with new drugs, I'm all for it. I'm not worried about Skynet and fucking the Terminator at any point in this thing, this process, whatever the fuck it is. You know, like I'm standing behind these guys doing their work, but kudos. Uh, I hope this all works out. This is great stuff. Let's look at next is injecting human cells into rats brains to study psychiatric disorders. (laughs) Oh, a lot of rat lovers. Scientists from Stanford University successfully injected human nerve cells into the brain of newborn lab rats and found that they formed connections with the animal's own brain cells, guiding their behavior. According to a study published in the Journal of Nature, By the way, again, highlighted blue text, underlined, leads to links. You can find more information. The human cells wound up making up one-sixth of the rat's brains. The cluster, known as a brain organoid, (sighs) (laughs) All right, well, okay. There's another X-Men name, okay, I'm writing it down, or whatever organoid then develops in ways similar to a human brain which could help researchers understand more about schizophrenia autism spectrum disorder bipolar disorder and other neuropsychiatric disorders (laughs) by the way you know when i grew up it was just autism like now it is a spectrum this is the spectrum disorder so, if everybody in my generation got diagnosed today or went for a test, everybody be on the fucking spectrum. It's like, it was good, you know, the more we know, the more we know. Blah, blah, blah. Um, it's definitely a step forward, says Paola Olada, a prominent Harvard University brain organoid researcher who wasn't involved in the study. Uh, you know, we gotta get those organoids. Some bio... <laughs> All right, come on. Just come on already. Bioethicists are uneasy. Okay, some bioethicists are uneasy about the implications of putting human cells into rats. I fucking told you, you rat lovers. See, you know, when I do the, when I get ready for these things, I glance through it or I go through it. And this was in the back of my mind. As soon as I started reading this thing, I started seeing, like, you know, that meme with the fucking lady with the glasses screaming on some steps of some fucking 
government building, whatever the fuck. No. Anyway. If they're uneasy about them you're putting human cells into rats, it raises the possibility that you're creating an enhanced rat that might have cognitive capabilities greater than an ordinary rat, said Julian Savulescu, Sav- a bioethicist at the National University of Singapore. But Dr. Sergio Pasca, a professor of psycho- psychiatry, and behavioral scientists at Stanford who developed the transplant technique says the human brain organoids made from stem cells stop developing after a few months. No matter how long we keep them in a dish, they still not become as complex as human neurons would be in an actual human brain, Pasca says. Well, you know, fuck it, A, just, yeah, fucking nuts. This is... What are you going to do? You're always going to have people. Look, I get it. You know, love dogs, cats, and you want to respect all life on the planet. You know, but this isn't how reality works. You know, sometimes we, you know, have to eat meat and we fucking, we we evolved this way. And yes, maybe you could say at a certain time in our, you know, future, is there a more of a, like the zeitgeist changes in the view of everybody. Like you don't see many people smoking cigarettes on the street no more. In that in that sense, now they get their vape, right? But you know, I could see there being a, such a great cheap way to manufacture food, and even if it's uh, fake beef and you know the wonder meats and whatever the fuck they are, I could see there being a change, a shift, and it just being more practical. So. I guess it'll be when do we get there and who's taking advantage of the fucking system, you know? It breaks my heart seeing the fucking... I want to have a cow and I want to have it as a pet. I want to see a fucking bolt being driven through its head and all those fucking videos you see and the chickens and all that stuff. I get it. But maybe in the future, in time. And, you know, it's good that people are sticking up for it and stuff, but I'm not concerned about fucking forming connections and brain cells and... That I'm going to worry about a fucking, my a mouse was a little more cognitive because of fucking bioethicists, okay? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But I get it in that sense, you know. Bioethicists. You know, chalk that one up there. All right. Creating life without sperm or eggs. Yes, I'm going to say it again. Creating life without sperm or eggs. Yeah. In experiments at the Wiseman Institute of Science in Israel, researchers created mouse embryos inside a bioreactor that were made up of stem cells cultured in a petri dish. No egg, no sperm. The embryos developed normally, starting to elongate on day three and developing a beating heart by day eight. It was the first time scientists ever managed to grow a fully synthetic mouse embryos outside the womb. The experiment marked a leap in the study of how stem cells from various organs and how mutations result in developmental diseases. It also raises profound questions about whether other animals, including humans, might one day be cultured from stem cells in a lab. According to STAT News, As soon as the science starts to move into a place where it's feasible to go from a stem cell population in a petri dish all the way through to organ development, which suggests one day it will be possible to go all the way to creating a living organism. It's a pretty wild and remarkable time, said Paul Tessa, a developmental biologist at Case Western Reserve University School of Medicine, who wasn't involved in the study. Now, again, again, creating life without sperm or eggs. That's fucking insane. That's incredible. Just shows you what we're trying to learn. And this is not, you know, the meme again with the chick fucking screaming, tears coming out of her eyes with the glasses on, with the pink fucking red thing. Everybody knows the meme now, right? Because it's part of our fucking psyche. And... I, again, like I said, I get it, but we need to do this. You know, how we figure out things 
it, this is the process sometimes. You know, these things lead to other things, which lead to other things, and the breakthroughs, and different divisions, and one might bring insight into other things. And this is going to be um, groundbreaking in the future when it's combined with other things, too. Personal medicine, you know. Um, you know, you go, you go to a doctor, you get scanned, and he's got a... He, they'll make aspirins just for you, and... They'll have, you know, stem cells ready for you to, you know, it's just, it's just a wonderful thing, in my opinion. Yes, we got to be careful, bioethicists are going to be, no, you know, whatever, okay, I get it. All right, curing HIV. A 53-year-old man became the fifth person to be cured of HIV following a stem cell transplant he received shortly after being diagnosed with the disease. The Dusseldorf patient, Dusseldorf patient, who was also diagnosed with a severe form of blood cancer, received a bone marrow transplant 10 years ago that gave him HIV-resistant stem cells. What? Okay. According to the Washington Post, he has been off antiretroviral medication for four years with no trace of the virus in his body. It's really cure and not just, you know, long-term remission, said Dr. Bjorn Eric Old Jensen. <laughs> oh, Dr. Bjorn Eric Old Jensen. Can, uh, stem cell transplants are considered high risk and normally reserved for people diagnosed with cancer. The Dusseldorf patient was only the third to receive the treatment and be cured of HIV. For now, the treatment will likely continue to be reserved for cancer patients. But it shows it's not impossible. It's just very difficult to remove HIV from the body. With five cases of HIV being cured, scientists are hopeful for the future. Following our intensive research, we can now confirm that it is fundamentally possible to prevent the replication of HIV on a sustainable basis by combining two key, th two key methods including antiretroviral medication and stem cell transplants, Jensen said. That's incredible. I mean, come on. We went from creating life without sperm and eggs, and we're curing HIV. We're on the way. We got five patients cured. I'm all for this. I here and there, it comes, you know, under my attention. I'll hit my links and do a little deep dive. So many things are just... You know, think what you could do for people's families, HIV, um, you know, everything, the psychiatric disorders, cancer, it all ties together. Science, medicine, how we, you know, learn things and other areas open up to other areas. You know, again, it's sometimes weird me saying, oh, I get geeked out, nerdy, and then you start talking about, you know, children's brain cancer and you're smoking weed and you're fucking up people's names. But I think in the long run, we're sitting here as a society of fucking human beings, a culture, the race of men, whatever the fuck you want to call it. And these things are just pathways and we need to go down them sometimes. If it's going into labs and putting brain cells into, you know, fucking rats, so be it. If it's reviving dead pigs' organs with this organ X fluid, and where do we go from there? Yeah, so we gotta watch out for Star Trek, right? Khan, you know, us making a race of superhuman beings that take us over, but we gotta watch out for them creating the AI, which creates their own AI and their own, and then Skynet happens. But until we walk down these pathways, we, you know, we judge and what is worth doing and what is not. Do we contact our bioethicist and have council meetings on, you know, whatever the fuck else? Who knows? I'll quickly, because I have a lot of these things open from time, you know, as I'm doing things. You know, my staff behind the glass here, you know, will point this out to me from time to time. All right. So I'm going to go through real quick because I'm going to end this soon. Uh, but there was a couple of things that I, you know, I got so many articles. I can't stay here for five hours reading them, but... Uh, some other breakthrough or type of things uh, that I wanted to talk about, but I you know, didn't want to get to. 
Uh, all right. Tonga's January volcano was the biggest eruption ever recorded. Um, discovery of a 30,000-year-old preserved baby mammoth. Breakthroughs in fungus communication. I talked about the James Webb telescope. New images of the cosmos. Bre- breathtaking. Fucking awesome. awesome. I talked about the dead pigs organs revived. Ice volcanoes on Pluto. Recovery of endurance ship off the coast of Antarctica. NASA's, I talked about the NASA DART mission. First complete sequence of the human genome. Yes, the first complete sequence of the human genome. Hydrogen powered trains debut in Germany. Oldest DNA ever found in Greenland. Human brain cells were successfully implanted. I did that with the rats. No! Bioethicists, okay, whatever. Uh, some people in comas are discovered to be conscious. Yes, that's fucking... I, I was going to do it. Th- did I do a podcast on that? Anyway, that yeah, might be one coming in the future. Uh, lab-grown brain cells learn to play Pong. Yeah, hold on. I'm going to give you a break here. Okay, I'm going to repeat that. Lab grown brain cells learn to play Pong. Yes, I've said it. You've heard it here. Microplastics were found in human lung tissue. Hello, it's everywhere. They're every, it's everywhere. You know, the whole planet, every fucking species is fucking shit. COVID 19 nasal vaccine. Awesome. AI. Systems reach new bounds. Okay, so I went over that a couple of times. Progress towards a universal flu vaccine. Yes, we got that. Major population declines of Alaskan crabs. I don't know about that. Carbon dioxide discovered in exoplanet's atmosphere. Hello. New milestone in nuclear fusion technology. Okay, so I did that. And these are just some of the things. Again, uh, the article I read from was from theweek.com. It is shit balls. Harold Mass and Davika Rayo. And this is just a, you know, maybe a, a pathway to the future. And some of these paths might not lead to many breakthroughs or things that will change people's lives. But it's a continuation to pursuit of knowledge and science, what it can do for us, how it works in hand in hand. I did a medical breakthroughs and science breakthroughs, and they're kind of, you know, correlated in that sense. And just the wonder of looking at the cosmos with the James Webb telescope. It's just amazing to me. It's hard to express. You know, I'm a long-haired guitar playing, leather jacket MC wearing at one time in my life. And it's sometimes I'm, you know, not privy to what people actually see or believe. And when I do find that, I kind of get a little... Russell's here and there when I hear shit about, you know, what science and this conspiracy shit. Because the last five years have been a fucking shit show in that area. But I hope that these things are, you know, mostly true. I try to do some fact checking. I have hope for the future in, in some of these cases here that we talked about. and Or just cases or, you know, the items we talked about. Whether it's medical or science. And I think it's great that people are doing this work. Some of these people might be fucking tw- mustache tw- twisting villains. I don't know. But I'm giving the benefit of the doubt for the majority of people who are hard at work trying to find the truth. Trying to find cures for things. Looking 13 billion years into the past with a telescope. This is fucking amazing. So I'll end this here. Hope everybody's doing well. My best to you and yours. Take care.